Today we're talking about the Solicitor's Qualifying Exams, or the SQE. These are the exams you have to pass if you want to become a solicitor in England and Wales. The ones that have made the news for their very low pass rates, high fees, and many, many scandals. But we're not here to talk about any of that. You guys know I just passed the SQE first time, documenting my journey throughout on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So I've obviously had a huge amount of questions ever since I passed from you guys. So today I've chosen six of them and we're gonna do a little SQE Q&A. These questions were all submitted by you guys across YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. So let's get into it. Question one, can you give me a brief understanding of the SQE slash what to expect? So. The SQE is like repeatedly being hit in the face over and over again. And just when you think it stopped, you get hit by a truck. I'm just joking. The SQE is obviously a hard exam. We all know this at this point. I do still think a lot of people don't quite believe how hard it is until they have to do it themselves. But I think there's definitely enough out there now to say, that it is hard. With the SQE, you have two sections. SQE one is two multiple choice exams, but they're single best answer multiple choice questions. This means that all of the answers might be correct and you have to choose the best answer given the situation, even if they are all technically correct. Yes, if you're wondering, this is the exam with the 50% pass rate. And this is to prepare you for the fact that in this industry, there is always gonna be somebody telling you that you're wrong, even when you're right. The second part, SQE2, you can't take until you've passed SQE1, but SQE2 is 16 practical-based exams on six key skills that lawyers should possess. You're tested on both the law and your use of the skills, and this is the final set of exams that you have to do to qualify as a solicitor in England and Wales. Question two, what is the hardest part of the SQE process? Well, that, oh. Did that get there? Where do I start? You could say a five hour online queue to book my exams, being locked in a room for over four hours before the SQE2 exams and not being able to leave. Or maybe you could say the fact that there were no past papers. So you never know if you've done enough. Honestly, I would say the hardest part of the SQE is persevering. It really does feel at times like you're just taking hit after hit and it does get exhausting. There were times when all I wanted to do was quit, but you just have to keep going. Not necessarily because you want to, but just because you're in too deep financially now. If you're talking academically though, the hardest part of the SQE is just the sheer volume of content. There is so much to get through that no matter how much time you have, you're always gonna feel like there's not enough time. Not all of the content is that academically challenging to be honest some of it is just long but that's my opinion the hardest part of the sqe is the sheer volume of content and finding the strength to persevere can you work part-time while studying the sqe so i've given some very conflicting information with this and i'm going to do a donald trump tactic and just completely u-turn on everything i've ever said before i have always said i don't think it would be possible at all to work even part-time while studying the sqe full-time as it's just such an intense course however <laughs> Someone recently said something to me which I hadn't actually considered before. I don't know why. Every time I had said this, I had totally forgotten about just, you know, one tiny little thing, that being this account. <laughs> the amount of time I spend making videos, planning videos, watching my videos. All that time, I could have spent that working a part-time job instead and helped myself financially. So I would actually say that it is possible now to work a little alongside studying the SQE full-time. However, I still wouldn't recommend it. It would have been so much easier for me to not do that, as in this. The amount of extra time that I would have had would have made it so much less stressful because when I tell you I had zero time, I mean it. So yes, you might be able to work part-time, but I don't recommend it. But I do understand the reality of the SQE and the financial burdens that it does impose, particularly for self-funding students. So I know that for many people, they won't be able to not work as they won't have a firm sponsoring them for the exam fees. If you're watching this far, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as it helps me out a lot and make sure that you won't ever miss another video like this. We recently just hit our last goal on Instagram, so thank you so much for all of your support so far and don't forget to subscribe. I'm looking at you. So everyone is asking me how they should manage their time during the SQE. Because obviously the SQE is like trying to cram five years worth of content into a few months. So managing your time while studying the SQE is going to be very important so you can make the most out of your time that you have. My advice here, 
and I'll be quite honest, you're not gonna like it, is that you need to build your discipline and use a planner and plan your time. With the SQE, quite honestly, you're never going to have enough time to do everything that you wanna do. So making the most of the time that you have is very important. I use these planners to plan out my days, scheduling how much time I would allocate to each thing, whether that would be revising the undergrad law, doing practice MCQs, or making my flashcards. Everything was scheduled to maximize my use of my time. I even scheduled filming all of my videos. I'm so serious. These planners are from Blue Jay and they are the ones that I created a few years back to help me get through the stresses of second year of uni. You can check them out via the link in my bio and make sure to use code Jay's Law Life for an additional 10% off the entire store. To make the most of this, you have to be disciplined. I'll be very honest. If one day nothing goes according to your plan, you can't just abandon planning your time forever. It needs to be a consistent effort of planning. And once you master it, you'll find that one, you'll have way more time in the day to do things than you thought and two the things you get used to doing in a constrained amount of time you actually get faster at doing which makes even more time for yourself it's not easy but the sqe is not easy so if you want to set yourself up for success i'd really recommend getting yourself one of these planners and to start using them rigidly is a law degree easier than the sqe yes question six says <laughs> Obviously I'm joking. The answer to this is yes and no, which might actually surprise a lot of you. A lot of people might think after everything I've kind of said that a law degree is just miles easier than the SQE, but I'd say it's not quite. A law degree is hard in different ways. A law degree I would say is more academically challenging than the SQE, whereas the SQE is just a hell of a lot more content. Some of the SQE is critically challenging, but proportionally compared to your total overall learning, the SQE has just more rote learning than critical learning than a law degree would. Also, you've got to remember a law degree, you're learning a lot of stuff for the first time. Learning how to learn the law is very hard and that's not something you'll go through with the SQE as you'll probably have already done a law degree or the GDL, but it is still easier than the SQE because the SQE brings very different challenges and it really pushes you to your limits of what you can handle. Even as simple as the fact that you're tested on all of your law degree content and all this new procedural SQE content. So it's literally double the amount of workload in like a couple of months. But yes, the SQE is harder than a law degree, but in a slightly different way. This is definitely my most highly requested question. How do I study for the SQE? This is such a difficult question for me to answer and everyone takes different approaches to this. But number one that everyone should be doing is that you need to come up with a strategy. I'm hoping you know by this point in the video, but the SQE is not something that you can just stroll into. You need a strategy to do well in the SQE exams, which should start with going through the SRA spec and creating a checklist for yourself on the topics that you need to cover. Yes, the SQE means you are gonna know your underlying law, but it doesn't mean you need to know all of it. The SQE spec only includes certain topics. So for example, in criminal, you don't need to know every type of offence that you would have studied at undergrad, only the ones that they have specifically highlighted in the spec. That is why you need to come up with a strategy, which should start with a checklist. Obviously, time-wise, this is gonna take a good few hours as the spec is obviously very long. And you might not want to spend the time doing that when you're just drowning in SQE work. So I've actually spent the time for you putting one together, which goes through the whole spec and breaks it down into subject areas divided by FLK1 and FLK2. It's also designed to follow the spec, so it's easy for you to follow. If you want to download this one, you can get it via the link in my bio. So you need to form a strategy for your revision so you can put your best foot forward and know what you're revising, how you're revising it, and when you're revising. I know you guys are obviously quite rightly stressed about retaining such a vast amount of information for this exam. For me, the last time I had closed book timed exams was my GCSEs. <laughs> So we're going back over half a decade, which was very scary to deal with. And I can understand why a lot of you are worried about retaining the information and want to know about my top revision tips for the SQE. When it comes to my top study slash revision tips for the SQE, I think a lot of you guys can probably guess that for me, it was 100% flashcards. I think you guys know I quite literally made hundreds of flashcards for the SQE. Like this is not even all of them. The SQE, particularly SQE1, is just drilling you 
over and over and over again on the law. So you need to have the active recall of the functioning legal knowledge. The best way to get that, in my opinion, is by using flashcards and drilling them constantly over a period of time so that the law does just get stuck in your head. You want to become this store of just loads of legal knowledge that you can access immediately. And an active recall method is the best way to help you get there. I used to be a mind map person. The very, very OG followers of you will know, but for the SQE and the challenges that it brings, I actually say that flashcards are the best revision technique. Thank you for watching this Q&A session on the SQE. I hope this helped you guys a lot and allowed you to learn more about the SQE exams. Make sure to subscribe so that you never miss another video like this and let me know what you want to see next from me or even if you want to see a part two of this with more questions because I probably have enough to do it. See you in the next one.